Okay, very much for giving this opportunity to the Sri Lanka College of Sexual Health and HIV Medicine. Uh, so there are viewers uh, uh, who are online. And uh, so I would like to speak on the sexual and gender diversity. Can I see the video one? Okay, enjoy. Right, so this is the overview of the presentation. So I'm going to discuss on a uh, few areas uh, uh, in the sexual and gender diversity. So biological sex, or the anatomical sex, I think by just uh, having uh, the word, you can understand what it is. So then uh, gender identity and gender expression, which include the masculinities and feminities. And then I'm going to discuss a little bit uh, on sexual orientation, how persons are attracted to others and sexual attraction. And the, then the sexual behavior, which I am not going to talk on any much, right? So, so this is the very you know simple uh, model that we can discuss everything in one slide. Uh, so we we'll, let's start with that. So when you look at the downstairs, we will start with the biological sex. So what I am going to discuss is how diverse people. So asking what is your sex is not that easy in this context, but you feel like it's very simple, but not that simple, right? So there are things. So these are at least a few, three places that I want to discuss the diversity. And then the, finally, all this diversity come out as an expression of sexuality, right? So if you take the, the anatomical or the biological sex, so there you know that the variations are, if the penis is there, you call the male. And if the vagina and the labia and clitoris and that type of external genitals are there, then you call the person or the neonate as a female. And if there's something wrong or something not uh, as typical, then you call that they are intersex. So there are variations. There are many intersex situations. And uh, so we call together these intersex as DSDs. So I'll come to that disorders or the differences of uh, sex development. And then I would like to uh, have some idea about this gender identity, right? So although you have your anatomy, it doesn't tell everything. So then your gender identity is important, right? There are some people feel, so I feel like a man or a woman or some are in between. So some are non-binary. So therefore they are again, not binary. That's what I want to tell you. It's a plural situation. Yeah, you have multiple different expressions. And then the other point is the sexual orientation, that is sexual attractions. So they are based on the attractions. You can discuss that some people may be attracted to the same homosexual, heterosexual, bisexual. They're not very interested. And homosexual. So they are relations. So therefore, remember, as doctors also, we need to have uh, a so why is know that once they start talking so let's move on then the biological sex are in words if I say sex refers to the biological and the physiological characteristics of that male female six so therefore, uh, biological sex, you have no issue understand the person. In your neighborhood, uh, just after 
uh, do your pediatric work, what routes you can identify with the uh, uh, baseline resistance assays, baseline resistance pain, six So then the, the important thing is that in biological sex, I just go through this intersex. What is this intersex? So you can see some uh, intersex, uh, you can start from the chromosomal sex, internal genital sex to external genital sex. So there are many steps in that. You can just confine to one. So there are many steps. There are many steps and there can be many uh, issues in relation to that, the development of the, the real or uh, perfect or whatever, uh, the typical external or the internal genital. There are many steps, right? So if you take, uh, some intersex organs like this in very early stages. So they are, it's not clear whether the neonate is going to be a male or a female or any male genitals or a female genital. So you don't know about what's going to be the sexual attraction or the gender identity of the baby or the uh, neonate. So then you just notice, you just notice something, you will see some uh, anomaly. And then if you just keep these children alone, so they will be like adults, like on the right side. So this is complete the anatomy. And the, so that variation. So then if these variations, uh, the, the medical people, medical people thought that these variations are like, uh, you know, disorders of sex development. So it itself says that there's a disorder. So do you think we need to consider it as a disorder in socially? So that means you all stigmatize these people having some problem, right? You can't say problem even, this is a variation. And then the more you know, accepted term, so that is a differences, difference of sex development, DST, which they have changed it. So there are differences. So then, uh, one in 2,000 births, one in 1,500 births, there, there can be some genital ambiguity of uh, children, right? the, the neonates. And then uh, if you look at the disorders of sex develop, development or the differences of sex development, there are many problems. There are chromosomal problems, right? So there are internal genital problems and external genital issues. And uh, the double penis or double uterus or the, the different different situation, titoromegaly and the micro penis is also coming. If the penis is less than like uh, 2.9 inches, so they consider it as a difference of uh, sex development. So they consider that under uh, the DSD. So surgical corrections. So people are doing surgical corrections for intersex and the hormonal corrections. Do you think that is okay? Or do you want to consider this as a different group? You have the male, female, and intersex. Why don't you have a group called intersex rather than going to changes of the hormonal treatment or of surgical corrections? So these surgical corrections are wanted by parents not the baby or the child or the, uh, the, the adult. So you are pushing something uh, based on, uh, based on uh, you know, thinking that there should be binary all the time, not in between people should not be there. They have to be corrected and put into two sides. And then they're not considering what is going to have in their attractions and the gender identity, they're not considering anything. So then still we know that people are doing it, no big thing. But you know, you can see here, they have a big protest from these people to end intersex surgery. Because you are giving these intersex surgeries for these unknown children, where you have not read anything about the sexual orientation, attraction or gender identity or anything. They don't know when you are giving the surgery, right? 
So then again, so these things happen in the world. And also this uh, Californian senator and uh, the US, so they came to a, a situation or a, a conclusion there that they should have autonomy to intersex people. They need to take their decisions. Not the parents or somebody who has seen the genitals. So that's also going on, right? Uh, so then the, but at some ages, if they want to do that, say they can get it done. But still, what is uh, being practiced is they are going for a correction. So these are intersex organs. Uh, so then that is about the biological sex. Still, I'm talking about the biological sex. Sorry. And then I come to this topic. Biological sex part, just keep aside now. Biology, you know, the two ends and then in between there can be intersex. So then let's look at this one, gender. What is gender really? People talking about the gender, gender, gender all the time, what, but what is it? It's a social construct. It's a social construct. So people talk about the male appropriate uh, norms, roles, behaviors and activities and attributes. They say they are like Purusha Samaja Bahavira, Pirimi Vada. And then uh, there's another thing, the, uh, the women appropriate norms, roles, behaviors, the same activities and attributes and they are called femininities, the other one called the masculinities. Pirimi, like weather, gain weather. So everybody is having these two mixed. It's a blend of masculinities and femininities. You can't say the one person should have only the masculinities, the other one should have the other person should have femininities. There's no binary again. There's nothing binary there. There are many in between situations. If you take you all and I, so we all have a blend of masculinities and femininities. So when you are talking about that, it is a social construct that is called the gender, right? So when you look at, uh, there are some you know countries where they are biologically different, but gender-wise, everybody is doing everything. There is no separate, this is appropriate for men and this is separate for women. There's nothing like that in that countries, but it's still, so if you look at these ends, these are overlapping now. So therefore, in future, the people can be like a unisex, right? So they will share everything as one uh, types of different uh, masculinities and feminities. So they, they, they would have the mix as well as the everybody can do everything. So that is possible. So it's rather, it's not a nat nature, it's nurture, it's a nurture. So if you, a, a person is nurtured in such a way, so you can be trained to cook, you can be trained to do whatever the female's role, and the females can be trained to do the male role, but you have not been used it for many years, and you are in two sides and say, these are very murder, these are gan murder, right? But in gender, so that is still there, right? So let's look at uh, how uh, people share this, activities, roles, or the attributes. So you are being given, uh, the, if your person is anatomically male, you are being given a duty list by the society. You have to do these things. And if you are born a female, so you are given a different duty list. So therefore understand, so these are different roles, uh, the genders. So gender is again, you can understand, it's a very diverse topic. And you can do PhDs in gender now. This is. So then gender, what is gender identity now? Identity is yourself, whether you feel like a male or a female, whether you feel like a man or a woman, right? So that is called the identity. It doesn't matter you have the penis or the vagina. If the penis person is feeling like a female, so what to do? You can't change it. So that is gender identity. That is his identity. Or the person's identity, right? So this is gender identity is what you really feel, how you psychologically feel yourself. 
right? So that's what a person's innate and internal deeply felt sense of being either man or a woman, irrespective of anatomy, irrespective of anatomy. If you feel you are a male, you are a man or a woman, right? So that is talking, that is the, the gender identity. So that's very important uh, for many reasons to understand. I will go further with some areas, right? It's a psychological sense of self. Now we know everybody, you are not having a, such a problems, but in minorities of people, they feel like that. They feel the opposite completely than anatomy. So you call the trans. So then what is gender expression? So you can play a thousand of gender roles, but you do not express it in the society. Uh, basically, you uh, express what is accepted by the society or what is a concept of the society. So you can, uh, the females who can climb the uh, trees with the pluck coconut or whatever, they can do anything. But that female is not, not going to do in front of a village or other people. So it's not the concept of the village. It's not the expectation of the people. So your expressions, although you have thousands of roles which are, you are very capable of, but you are not expressing anything. You express according to the societal understanding or the, according to the societal concepts. So therefore expression is different again. So then let's go to the sexual orientation. So that is the extent to which we are sexually, emotionally, and romantically attracted. So that is the extent you attracted one another. So we are talking about most of the STIs in, in relation to this attraction. Remember, the, there is a sexual attraction, romantic, as well as the emotional. So there are components more than this, but these are basic components. So therefore, if there is a relationship between two, you can't say that's only sexual, there can be situations, but generally as your preferred sex, it's going to be a, a emotional and romantic as well as a sexual attractions, right? So these are the, the homosexual, heterosexual rating scale, right? So there are many different uh, forms that uh, they are discussing that within our societies people are having, right? So therefore, based on these uh, orientations, people can be heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual, uh, non-sexual. So those are important uh, sexual orientation categories. Remember that there are non-sexual people also. They are not attracted right, to others much. So when you go through this uh, rating, you can see how there can be uh, you know, people who are exclusively heterosexual in our society. They even can't think of other possibilities. They kill these people. They, they say that we want to you know, shoot them and they stone to death or do something, right? So that is the thinking, you know, sometimes in this type of uh, exclusive heterosexuals. But on the other hand, the other end is exclusive homosexuals. So what to do? They are attracted emotionally, uh, sexually, emotionally, and romantically attracted to the same. So what to do with? You can't kill these people. It's not just a made up thing. If one person die, other can hang and die. So that's the level of emotional attractions they have. So you can't just disregard that, right? So even if they want to have sex, this exclusive homosexual can't get the the arousal or the interest of sex even with the opposite. So then we need to consider this whole spectrum, right? So then the, the other part is the asexual or the non-sexual. So these attractions made people to interact with others and the STIs and HIV and other old diseases, right? So then uh, the graphically the same is mentioned here. So what we need to understand is this is again not binary. It's not binary. It's plural. So it's a, and it's not the majoritarianism. The majority is correct. Is that is also wrong. 
right? Bahutarvade Galapenta. So this is pluralism, Bahutvade. So you have to accept differences. The diversity you have to accept. You can't, if you want to kill this whole generation, would you think the next generation will be a full player of other attractions and have only the heterosexual? No, that won't happen. So this is a random occur or occurrence or whatever we can see the diversity within the spectrum. <clears throat> so then sexual behavior, I don't want to discuss about sexual behavior much. Let's go through some of the, you know, the behavior. So I don't want to tell anything. Uh, so let's go through some of the important groups in sexual and gender diversity, which you can understand these three points. Okay? Identity, attraction, and the biological sex. The two places at least to try to analyze. And this is the DST athlete, the, the, the one in the, the, the dark person, right? So, Casta Semenya, she's a DST athlete. And the other one is, uh, is an author, right? So then this DST people and the athletics are, you know, having many issues. So the, she is actually, uh, she's actually, uh, African 800 meter athlete at the two uh, maybe the uh, two times uh, Olympic champion and three times uh, world champion in 800 meters. But she has to go to the sex test. The usually you know the doping test, but she has to go to the sex test. And her assigned she's a assigned female at birth. But she, she's DSD, she's having some uh, differences in the development, right? So, phyla alpha reductase deficiency, yeah, they have a little bit of higher testosterone levels. So, they say that would cause the higher performance, right? So, then uh, she need to maintain a low testosterone levels to perform, right? So, that happened. And then, uh, uh, then the Olympic uh, International Olympic Committee uh, took some uh, regulations. They are these type of situations. Uh, they, they need at least uh, if you, if the uh, the run is more than four hundred up to one mile, the testosterone has a role, right? So therefore, they can't have a higher levels in women's sports especially, right? So this is a DST athlete, right? Okay, who is this? So I'm talking about the DSTs, right? Little bit on the intersex. So it's heartbreaking, right? So Tom Cruise is a client filter. But they speculate, right? Based on, and uh, I think uh, he fathered two or three children, but not there. And based on the, the, the other features, uh, they speculate that the Tom Cruise is a fine filter. Fine filter where you have an extra X chromosome rather than X and Y, there's another X. So they are DSD situations, right? And then the James Lee Curtis, yes, she's again an American act actress and the fine filter, right? So if you, see, if you see these three ladies, right, who are very the popular celebrities, and one is uh, the Catherine, she's a doctor, genetic, and this one is the gymnast, and the other one is again a Hollywood actress, Linda Hunt, all are turners. It's not the chromosomal sex is different. And then we will come to this topic. So what happened to these people? It's a myth that MSMs are intersex. The male who are attracted to male are not intersex. Where is the variation? Variation is with the attractions. So they have the sexual, emotional, and romantic attraction to the same. You can't kill these people now. So it's a variation. The modern society considers it's a variation. Right, so the, because of this, 
they are perfect boys. There is nothing anatomically wrong. And the gender identity is also feel like a male, no problem, right? But the attractions, there is a diversity. So with that, they are going to have different relationships. So they are, we worried about the STIs and HIV uh, pernicious. Uh, so we worried about this and uh, we are not worried about their behavior. We are worried about the diseases that could transmit between these behaviors, right? So therefore, though, don't think that any categories, even the health category, there are many, usually about 5% of the population, male population, they can have marital sex, right? So therefore, this uh, in HIV is the 49, now, now the 49% of HIV infections are, uh, they are getting uh, by engaging in marital sex now. That means almost half of people are uh, acquired HIV from male to male sex now. The female to male ratio is one to seven, right? So this group is important as far as in our uh, specialty is concerned when controlling. Uh, so they are not having identity is okay, anatomy is okay, but the attraction is the variation. So here again, same, so they are, attracted, that is emotional, sexual, and romantic, right? And then who are these people? So now we are all cisgenders. You have the anatomy and gender identity same. So then that you call the cisgenders, but they are having the opposite. So they have the anatomy, but the gender identity feel like a woman. So what to do then? They say they can't accept the anatomy. They say they can't accept it. So these are the transgenders. So they are, the variation is they have the, this is all uh, a male to female transgenders. They are all born males, nothing wrong. Anatomical, penis, testicle, everything is there. Sperms, everything is okay. Uh, but they feel like a woman. So that is gender identity the psychological feeling of sense or deeply felt sense of uh, is uh, female, uh, human, women, women, right? So then what, what, then what uh, would they do? So they start, you know, very early adolescence, they feel like this. They start to feel the difference. And with that, they want to change the body. So then they take uh, the dressing is one thing, the lipstick, uh, eyebrows, and then taking the hormonal treatment, and then they, they go for the, the, the voice uh, surgeries, and then the sex reassignment surgeries. Uh, so therefore, that is the, their usual uh, route uh, to get the uh, distress away from their minds. Am I keeping the time? Or? Okay. So then uh, I would rather die as me than this as somebody else. That's how they feel. They feel that, that they are living in a, a different body. They feel like dying is better than having a, uh, living in a different body. So that's the feeling. So they are called the transgenders. So I'm in the right bathroom. So those are some of the problems they have. So their mind is female, but anthem is male. So they have to go to the male toilet, but the mind is female. So what to do? So there are issues. So we need to consider as doctors all this. And then who are the lesbians? So where is the issue? The perfect females, anatomy, no issue. Gender identity, yes, female. But the attraction, like in female, male uh, attraction, so they are attracted to the same. But when you are, try to analyze the masculinity and femininity, so what I discussed, so one is having a more masculine role than the others. The external role, you can see, so their appearance are like more masculine, more pirimiyaka, right? The, the other one is having the female uh, features. If somebody wants to ride a motorcycle, so the right side person will do that, right? Like that. So therefore, they are the gender roles they share between the, uh, this relationship, right? So therefore, in the variation wise, so they have the attraction variation where they need the same type of 
they are they have the sexual response cycle is you know very um, so they they have it in high potential with their this type of attractions and uh, then who are these So after having discussed all this, but they come and say, no, we are not men, we are not women, we are different. So what to do then? We say we are different. Anatomy wise, you can assess either male and the female and the other and the sex. That you can do. Attraction, you can have ask few questions and see whether you are attracted to the same or the opposite or both or no attraction. So by asking questions, then we, if you ask how you feel. So they, they are, you know, they are wordless. They don't know what they feel. They feel like we are not men and we are not women also. I don't know, something like that. And they are usually called gender queers altogether or non-binary people otherwise. So this is endless, right? The gender variation, now talking about the, the uh, over 100 different gender roles. Right, so these are called Vikara Vivida Rupi, Vivida Rupi in detail or the gender queers. Right, then what we have to do? So it's very important to uh, respect people's desired self identification. That's what I want to tell you that as uh, last words. So we need to respect their desired self identity, never blame them, no, don't do that. That's not our job. Our job is to treat these people if they have uh, some diseases or something and never try to change these people. It's not our duty or it's not practical or it's not going to work also. Right? So therefore, one should never assume another person's identity based on that person's appearance also. Right? So with that, I just discussed the how diverse is saying are you male or a female? It's not that easy, right? So are you men or a woman? So that's not easy, but majority is, it's very clear, but there are many other in between situations. So thank you very much. You see, if you have any questions, I can answer. Yes, sir. Uh, this people? Yeah. So you have to ask. <laughs> even, even in the state, we are asking them. that. That's why that one is not dependent on other. The anatomy is not dependent on the attractions. Right? So these are working independently. So they, if you ask, they say, no, I'm not interested. In Somebody might say, yes, I interest uh, feminine, 60% uh, the males and another, you know, 40 percent uh, female, something like that. So it's open. It's it's you can't uh, judge uh, orientation based on the anatomy or based on the identity. So that that is the uh, situation. So you have to ask. About these people. Uh, so I. Uh, there may be, but I have not gone say, uh, to say that this this number of percentage are having uh, homosexuality, bisexuality, heterosexuality, pansexual, or asexual, that type of things are. I'm not uh, very sure, but I can. I have to go through uh, some of the literature, but right now I have no uh, information to give directly. But it is um, a very private question also to ask somebody. If I ask one of you, are, are you heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual? They would definitely say, I am heterosexual, but nobody knows, right? So that is the accepted concept or the expectation in this small society. Uh, the I can say I want heterosexual. Because you are giving an you expression, you are giving an answer which is accepted, but not real, something, right? So therefore, uh, so what you see uh, by seeing that it's uh, not easy. Sometimes we need to ask, shall I call you she or he? So this is some of the good way if you are uh, you know, thinking of uh, discussing something with them. 
do you want me to call you she or he, something like that, right? So then they say, no, no, I am he or greeted. So that, that also is a courteous way to discuss things with them. Because you're not clear, you're not, you don't know what's the gender identity. So then you, you are, you know, given that uh, chance of asking that question very quietly. Without saying, you have judgment and you say this is male and, no, you see, anatomy, anatomy can be, right? Anatomy can be male, find the gender identity could be female, the woman. They might say, nah, I like to call me a she. So therefore, the, what I want to tell you that these are very diverse and, and uh, even in Sri Lanka, we have not gone through many, you know, I have done uh, some researches with them and some different uh, things. Uh, but uh, generally about the sexual attraction, we have not gone through, but we can do it uh, like uh, self, um, like uh, self-administered type of questions, but still very difficult. They also come out with